Palestinian Youth League and I saw how they could work with young people. I saw that the young people here could speak English. They learn English in school. So they have a story to tell and I was working in education. I had been teaching in France, teaching English. So I had a video camera. I made contact with schools in Ireland and that's where our story begins. development studies with a focus on uh, the Middle East and I used to uh, study in Lebanon where I um, worked in a Palestinian refugee camp so I got to know more about Palestine and uh, the Palestinian situation so I was interested in coming here so now I'm here doing an internship for seven months yeah and I've been here for four months now and will stay another three months First, I knew some internationals already before I came here, or my, I had some friends who worked at the TIFF, so I know some internationals through that. And also, if you like go down to the old city area, it's kind of easy to meet some international people. So My name's Ben, and I'm a filmmaker, and I live and work in Northern Ireland, which is part of Ireland in the UK. Yeah, and uh, how did you come here, and who did you come here? Uh, I, I came to uh, Israel and Palestine with uh, schools across borders. They're a charity that work with schools in, pa in Palestine and also in Israel and also with our students. So uh, they brought a group of our students over to Israel and Palestine to meet the students here, to talk to them about the conflict. And I've been filming the conversations, the experience of the students. I haven't visited all cities. I still have some cities I want to go to, but I've been to Bethlehem and Ramallah and Jericho and, well, Hebron, of course, <laughs> and uh, Jerusalem also. Um, my favorite city. I don't know. I guess that because I know Hebron the most, I feel most comfortable here, so I like being here because I know the people and I know the area and where I want to go and like this, yeah. And then I came every year from 2001. So, I'm a Muslim Khalili. I'm uh, almost a complete Khalili. I just have to change my religion, perhaps. Okay, so that's really it. Um, our project, we built our project thanks to our partnership with uh, the International Palestinian Youth League. 20 schools in Ireland, at least five schools here, five to uh, 11 schools in total. We have brought 110 Palestinian students to Ireland over the years. We have 
also started to bring Irish students here since 2009 was our first time because we couldn't do it before that. So we have created something, but we're very dependent on the funds, and it might end now because we've come to an end uh, with the funding. It's very hard to get. We also, I should say, we work with Israeli schools in Jerusalem because it's important to listen to both sides of the story. Um, that's uh, important to include in the story here. I can't say I've traveled and seen a lot of Palestine. Um, we, we basically we arrived and stayed in Jerusalem and did some filming in Jerusalem and then we came straight to Hebron. So all I really saw was some, some places on the way. Um, we've been to Bethlehem as well. And I, I, I'm not sure if I have a favorite place because I haven't seen enough, but I, I think the first few days were very intense because it's so different from Ireland, you know, everything is it's very noisy, you can hear car horns from the taxis all day, you know, there's people selling everything you can think of in the street, and there's just people everywhere, and just, yeah, the busyness of it is quite hard to kind of get used to, um, but I think having been here two weeks, I'm slowly getting used to the way of life. Well, first of all, I feel like it's kind of different depending on when you go, um, but in general, like, it depends on how you want to see it, but it's it's interesting to go there. I like architecture a lot, so for me it's interesting to go there and see the old houses and how they were built. And uh, also, like, but it's different from the rest of Hebron because it's not so many people. I was very clear in my mind that I wanted to come over here, and it was during the second intifada, okay? So, um, I wanted to come here. I had a choice, Gaza or Hebron. So... The man in Khan Yunus, he said, listen, it's very hard here. And I said, I don't want theft, I want to be, you know, where it's happening. There are people there, life continues, I work with the people. He said, well, it's going to be very difficult, really. Um, but if you have any other places, I said Hebron. And he said, that's Gaza light. You will have uh, hard stuff there. And I knew about the settlers in the city, so I was really was interested in Hebron more than visiting Ramallah or Bethlehem. Also, I didn't want to mix with Christians. I wanted to meet with Muslims, the 90% majority of the people. I wanted to meet with the people on the ground and to meet with the kids, to get their story. I think what I like most about the old city of Hebron is the, the architecture, because it's, it's a lot of old buildings and I really like this. And uh, also, the old city of Hebron is kind of different from other parts of Hebron, because there's not so much people there, and yeah, there are more internationals and more of a international presence there because of the situation with the settlements and uh, yeah. We visited the old part of the city in Hebron, um, and we visited with some local students here who are working in the media center. Um, one of the things we wanted to do was to walk down Shahada Street, um, which is completely uh, closed to Palestinians. Um, this is part of the program that um, Darren from Scots Cross Borders likes to do every year. It's kind of a test. Uh, so uh, we got to Shahada Street and the soldiers uh, asked us why we were there. We said we're here with some Palestinian students and some Irish students and we want to walk the street. And he said, that's okay, you can go ahead and do that. And Darren was a little surprised that he was so relaxed about it. So we started to walk down the street. And then about 100 yards later, two soldiers came down off a roof and they said, what are you doing? Why are you here? Uh, and, and Darren again said, well, we talked to the soldier at the start of the street. He said we could walk down there. And the, the second soldier wasn't so sure. And he got on his radio and said, I have to check about this. And so we had to stand and wait for 10 minutes. And then eventually he said, it's okay. He, you know, he didn't seem so convinced, but he said, you can go on. So he walked another 100 yards. And <laughs> at this stage, we're only halfway down the street. And then another group of soldiers came down from a hill. And the, the second group of soldiers came down and they, and they said, uh, we, we need to see your ID. We need to see your passport. So everybody got out their passports. And um, they checked those. And then one of the soldiers said, it's okay. You can go ahead. But the Palestinians have to go back. So we said, um, well, if we can't go together, we all walk back again. Um, so I was filming this the whole time and sort of trying to film the soldiers and the conversations and you know, what was going on. It was, quite, it was quite strange. It was kind of sad as well. I, I felt really bad for the Palestinians because some of them had never been on the street before. Some of them hadn't been on the street for a year. 
um, and nobody had ever been down the whole street. Um, what, what made it stranger was the next day, um, the R students walked the whole street without the Palestinians. We just wanted to walk down and see see what was there. And there's nothing to see, you know, it's all closed up. and all, It's just like a military zone. Um, so we got to see the whole street. We got to see, you know, settlers coming in and out, and that was it, you know. So I think I think we've seen both sides of the wall, or sorry, we've been we've seen both sides of the separation. We've walked to the checkpoints, we've experienced the checkpoints. Um, we were able to pass through very easily. I've seen what the Palestinians have to put up with going through. They have to take you know belts off, phones out. You know, I've seen um, and heard the stories of teachers who work. And I've heard the stories of people who have to travel maybe an, an hour around the town just to get to their place of work because they can't walk up one street. So um, I think we've, I can't be, uh, begin to understand the whole situation here, but I think we've seen a good picture of what it's like for life here, for, you know, for some people to live here. Um, we also talked to uh, people who lived on is it Al- Alrameda, the hill, I think is, is the right word. Um, and they live next door to settlers and the, the, the tensions and the, the treatment, the way they're treated by the settlers who live next door and you know, burning out their cars and throwing rubbish in their garden and just the constant um, abuse really, um, intimidation. It's, it's quite sad to see and to hear from lo- you know, local people who are just living in their house. So I, I, I think we've seen a good side a good amount of, of what it's like for Palestinians to live here, but it, it's still only a tiny portion of people who live in the city. So I can't I can't claim to know everything about everyone. Um, but uh, I've enjoyed being here. I've enjoyed the the vibrancy of everything, and I love the food. Um, I love everyone is so friendly. You walk down the street and they see that you're a foreigner, and they say hello, welcome to Hebron. You know, uh, nobody has said a bad thing to me. You know, I've, I've been made very welcome and uh, I've really enjoyed my time here. I live in an apartment under a Palestinian family so I usually go home to them and I I watch them cook. I haven't tried cooking by myself because I'm not such a well, I'm not so interested actually in cooking so but I, I enjoy spending time with them and um, watching them cook and trying to figure it out but it's really difficult I think so. Uh, the, most of the food we've eaten has been kebabs, which sometimes are good, sometimes they're okay. Um, the best food we had was in the old market, in the in the old uh, down towards the old city. Um, there's a man grilling chickens, and I don't know what kind of he uses some kind of spices on the chicken. It's a really really good chicken. Um, so we had we had um, chicken and salad and chips and um, there one day, and I, that was my favorite meal so far. I think. Um, I, love, I want to go back and ask them what the spices are <laughs> so I can take some home back to Ireland. That's what life is like here. I sit with families, I sit with the students and their parents, I sit with teachers. And um, that's how, you know, I know the streets of this town because I've been invited to so many houses and I've eaten so many maklube and mansaf and, you know, that's really, you know, I contact with the people, you know. And uh, you can't beat that. You cannot beat that. Because I am here and I want to have the experience of how people live here, I have been trying the traditional foods like makluba and kidra and and yeah. And but also I think that I think that there are more foods that are vegetarian than people here think about. Because if I talk to Palestinians here, they would be like, "What do you eat? You can't eat anything here. It's all meat." But you have like mushadara and falafel and hummus and labna and tabula and. Fat- Fatush. 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 <laughs> yeah, so there, I mean, I think my favorite food is mushadara because I really like the spices that they put in it when they make a really good mushadara. But I also like makluba because I can just choose not to eat so much of the meat and have the other things, corn flowers and the rice. First, you start by chopping up the vegetables, the potato and the corn flour, and I guess you boil it, or you f- actually you f- like fry it, and like uh, you make it like you do with French fries, I guess. And you cook the rice, and you add this uh, yellow spice that makes the rice yellow, which I really like. It looks so delicious when you add it. And um, and yeah, we and you add together the rice with the corn flour and the potatoes and and the meat, of course. <laughs> and 
Yeah, and then you put it all together and you... I think it, makluba means upside down because you turn it over, so you flip it over. So then it's like, yeah, you have all the food. <laughs> I'd certainly encourage anyone if internationally from abroad to come here and, and visit Palestine. Um, I, I, I would, one thing I would say is just coming here for a week, you're not going to learn the whole picture. And I don't claim to know everything. You know, I've, I've just seen a tiny, tiny glimpse of what's going on. So I would just say don't expect to learn everything. And it's not black and white. There are many shades in between. Um, and there are many different stories, many different angles. So it's, it's, I still will go home and, and, and kind of tr want to learn more. I will keep contact with this place. Um, I think it's important to, um, to encourage young people to keep speaking. We will look at other places and we will always keep that connection with Palestine. So we'll keep planning for the future. Nothing's clear at the moment, but we'll keep working on it. I think because I'm international, there is like everything that applies to other people may not apply to me because I'm, I'm from a different culture and people can see that. Um, so I think they're more forgiving with when maybe I do things that that is not part of the culture. But I mean, yeah, it is difficult for me to to be here because I'm Swedish and I'm raised in a Swedish society, and this is a completely different way of thinking and doing things. So it is challenging it in some in some ways. But I think that people people are generally nice and like accept that. I don't want maybe to do exactly the same way or that like I can understand the way they're doing it but maybe I don't feel that that's the way I want to do or live. <laughs> I think most people when I was leaving home um, my family were very excited about me going here and uh, my friends were quite jealous. <laughs> it's like you know do you need a sign man and people asked me do you need me to help you and there was only room only a place for one person so I had to I'm doing everything myself um, when I'm filming so uh, I've obviously been on Facebook a lot while I've been here and putting photographs up and, and people have enjoyed kind of commenting on the photographs and, and it's good to com communicate while you're here what you're experiencing and some of the sights you're seeing so I've, I've enjoyed kind of doing this stuff online while I'm here. I think first of all because I have been traveling a lot around in the Middle East before I came here um, my family and friends were kind of um, they kind of got used to the idea that I wanted to travel here and know more about this place and I told them a lot about the situation before so I actually don't think they were so afraid but I think also when I talk to them and I explain how I'm living here they see that it's like it's not a terrorist place <laughs> it's just a place like anywhere else people trying to live their lives so yeah I was very clear in my mind that I wanted to come here but my mother was very upset. She was, oh, they are going to kill you. I said, who is going to kill me? The Israeli soldiers, which already shows my mother's politics. Not about the suicide bomb attacks, but she was more afraid of how things would be here. So there was a, a conflict in Macedonia at the time, which said, go to Macedonia. You don't go to Palestine. It will, you know, it will be too dangerous for you. So I had to her and tell her that it will be okay. All right. The first day in Palestine. That's a funny story. I arrived in Hebron. I had to find Adli, my contact here. And um, I didn't have a mobile phone with me. I didn't want one. I wanted to be really, to depend on people. So we made contact. We made contact with Adli. There is a restaurant in Hebron called Happy Bunny. There is also a swimming pool, pool called Happy Land. So we went to Happy Bunny and we went to Happy Land. So I met Adli, he was having a swim. So it was time to call home. And I told my mother, you know, I'm here, I've arrived. I was in Happy Bunny, I was in Happy Land. So, and, uh, so it helped to... She thought I was in the Bahamas or something. She didn't think I was in Palestine. Usually either I spend time with the family that I stay under and uh, we like read together, watch a movie or just sit and talk um, or go to a coffee house and smoke some algila and have, yeah, have some coffee with friends. <laughs>
Little moon in Navia fell Applied the city Something like that Oh, Nadikum Ashuktu ala yadikum Afu My goals when I came here was first I wanted to learn the language better so I wanted to try to speak with people and I think especially in Hebron it's good because a lot of people will speak Arabic to you so it's a good place to try to learn Arabic and uh, also I want to know more about the tradition and the dabka and the food and everything although I don't think I will fully know how to dance or cook everything maybe we'll see I think when I've been here, I've realized a lot of people are, are very, very worn down by the conflict and have lost hope. And I can see why, because it's gone on this long now and people don't want to risk going to jail anymore. People don't want to risk their lives. And, and some, I can see why some people just want to get on with life. And other people, maybe the younger ones, uh, want to kind of rail against the oppressors and, and to change things. Um, I hope there will be change, but I hope it will be in a peaceful way. Um, I know from experience in Ireland, you know, there was a lot of violence and it changed things, but afterwards people have to live with family members who are dead, you know, and people are no longer around to share the peace. So I'm, I'm kind of more for peace in a non-violent way, and I, I would like to see a, a, a resolution here. I don't know what the resolution is. There are so many um, people telling you different um, solutions to the problem and it's hard to say which is the right one but I know that um, the occupation, is, I feel the occupation is wrong and there has to be a solution for Palestinians to live in freedom and that, that's all, I, that's the best way I can describe it and I hope, I hope that ends peacefully um, but I certainly will be keeping in touch with people here after I leave. We've made lots of friends on Facebook and I want to keep in touch with people and, and talk to them and, and if there's any way I can um, help in a very small way, I'll try to do that. So that's, that's the best I can do, I think. So I will be walking to a school at the top of the hill, for example, Jabal Johar. So you have a lot of people going through. Oh, where it? Oh, where it? Like, I'm in Ireland. Ireland. Yes, I'm in Ireland. Europe. أنا في المدرسة مدرسة بنات مدرسة بنات آه آه شو أنا أستاذ أستاذ إيش أستاذ إنجليزي آه تفضل شب شو شب أخوي لا 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 بد شو كان شو كان بدو في إشتغل بدين إن شاء الله أوكا after I come back and it's like shows ماك ما اسمي دارن and and then and then it's always أبي شمرك so I go, uh, uh, 135. I feel that there are always new things to learn. That's what I especially like about being here. That I feel like every day I'm learning something, something new, if it's about society or the language or the way people live. So I really like this. And what I wish for Palestine, I guess it's that people will will live good lives, I guess, if you can say that. They will have better and, and more, um, how would you say, more calm lives, that life would be more calm for them and not so much. Hebrew and Palestine, uh, it's uh, part of me. Like, I, I don't see myself as an outsider. Ahalan wa sahalan fi Palestine. Welcome to Palestine. <laughs>